So cute, I think. My boy, Lloyd Jones. Thanks. My morning routine is pretty simple. Wake up about half eight, shower. Um, usually make myself a tea, just a green tea. And yeah, get ready, hit the road. It's not a bad journey to train, it's only about 10 minutes now, and I set off two, three minutes ago. So yeah, get myself in and have breakfast. With this car, like, I've, I've had a few nightmares to be fair. Um, there's charging points in the car park, and sometimes I switch off and forget that it's, it's low. So I wake up in the morning, um, and there's one more morning I woke up and I only had about five miles left. So obviously I was not making it to training. And because the roads are so busy, it's nearly impossible to get a cab. Luckily, Lloyd, lives across the road from me. So I had to give him a shout and he just picked me up and took me in. But if not for that, I think it would have been a fine for late, to be fair. I usually just put my playlist on shuffle so I could get anything, literally anything. Um, and then I go from there. It's not, it's not a long trip, so it's not usually time to listen to any sort of podcast or radio or anything. I just put on a few songs and then I'm in. Yeah, I've enjoyed obviously being back in London, being back close to family. Family can come to games and stuff. It's, it's definitely a lot better, um, more familiar surroundings. To be fair, I haven't lived sort of this side of the river, um, so it is new in some ways, but I'm still enjoying it. It's a nice area and close to the club, so it's easy to get things done. So my family live um, in East London, um, but I went to school in like North London, so I've been sort of all through London really. And then obviously like, I played my um, academy football in South London. So I've been all over, but this is the first time I've really been in South East and living here is definitely a lot different to living back home. When I joined here, I would say the, the person I spoke to the most was Mandela. Obviously I was aware that the likes of Ezri, Jay, um, Steffi as well, like those, those, these are people that I'm quite close to, have had relationships with the club and have um, spent time here. But I just think things happen so quickly. And to be fair, Mandela gave me quite a good insight. I think I spoke to Seth as well, to be fair, and he was the same. Um, and yeah, that was enough for me, really. Obviously, the injury was a bit of a setback a few, about a month ago now, I've come back from that. Um, but yeah, I think I've done okay. Um, of course, there's ways um, I know I can improve them. Um, um, once I hit that consistency, I think things will be fine. Being back with Appleton's been good. Um, obviously, knowing what he expects from his teams, um, I can bring a lot to the table in that sense. And I think the boys are starting to really understand what it is that he wants. Um, and yeah, he, he just tries to get the best out of all of us. Playing for England through the youth ages was like, massive for my experiences. Um, obviously, you build a lot of connections with, with boys that are playing at top academies. Um, and you still keep those sort of relationships even till now. Um, but yeah, the experience at, at that age is like, I can't, can't really compare it to anything else I've done in my career, to be fair. Um, even like the styles I play from um, different sort of managers that I've worked with through the age groups and um, oppositions that I've come up against, I thought that was massive for my experience. Players that I played with during that period that, that really stood out, um, one was definitely Mason Mount. Um, he was just like technically on a different sort of level. Um, uh, Marcus Edwards, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you could see what, what he's capable of doing now. Um, and like he's on the big stage now and he's still doing what he was doing back then. And I'm sure he has the potential to play even higher. The under 19 Euros was definitely um, one of like my best memories of my lifetime. Um, yeah, just to be fair, it was in um, Georgia, I think it was, and I'd never been there. Um, I don't even think I could point you out on the map even now, but <laughs> it's um, it was different, like away from family for quite a long period of time. Um, but I guess with the group, like you gain, gain a stronger bond and we did that and we managed to come away with a trophy. So yeah, that group of players is definitely there's definitely a lot of them that I still speak to now. And yeah, a lot of them are doing pretty well for themselves. And to be fair, I didn't really notice I was in the team of the tournament until like, I think my dad mentioned it to me like a couple months after or something. I didn't, I wasn't aware of it at the time. Um, but I guess
guess it's not really about um, individual stuff when you're at a tournament like that. You just want to help your team, and then those sort of little accolades come afterwards. So, yeah, of course it is like a proud moment for myself. But I'm just happy that we come away with um, what we went there for. I did look at sort of the players that are in and amongst it as well. Um, and yeah, there's there's some big names in there that are doing well for themselves now. So it is obviously another proud achievement for myself to be alongside them names. Going into training today, obviously with the game, um, there's no midweek game. So usually Tuesdays are a bit heavier. Um, Tuesdays with the day off tomorrow, you can expect a bit more workload. So expecting a heavier day yet yeah. I'm definitely ready for, I'm always ready for the, the training schedule to be fair I usually get through the training weeks all right I do think the schedules um set up for us to do quite well with the midweek games um, not not on for a while so obviously you've got to get your rest but at the same time you have to be prepared for the, the team on the weekend uh, yeah, when a new manager comes in, you always get sort of questions like what's the schedule like, what's his training regime like and things like that. But um, yeah, I think the boys have settled into it pretty well. And obviously I tried to give them a bit of an insight, but we're a few months down the line now and I, I haven't heard many complaints to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Alf, come, don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, Chuck's concert going on in there. Just off to breakfast now. We, we got... um monitoring today so when when there's no uh midweek game we do like testing in the week so you get time slots for that i see karoi in that <laughs> morning can i get some more bread please uh, yeah, white brown. White, please. White. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Cheers. So cute, eh? My oh boy, Lloyd Jones. Thanks. Got a few bits to sign now. Big day, so gotta leave it all out there. Short time, short time. Day in the life. Ask questions. It's not a bad last yet. Turn your arm over, the windows coming in, lads. Hey. And lads, just walking in for the white boy to go into your knee dry. Do our deals. Let's give you some a drink if you need it as well, lads. Really excited us at last. Oh my god. Listen to your names. So. Okay, okay, get 
Session done, weather not great as you can see, but good to get it done, get the work done. Off to gym now. <laughs> Gym done, um, time to get some food man, deserve it after a tough day. I'm gonna go in there now with the boys in the canteen. Right, you have pork, Ooh. and oh, thank you, you have risotto, veg, So the reason why the boys are eating on paper plates with wooden knife and forks is because the water's switched off in the kitchen so yeah this is the best we can do at the moment but well, it's not normally like this I promise. Probably a busier day than most um, obviously started off with like the monitoring stuff which we usually are not able to do and we've got midweek games um and then obviously the activation into like a bigger training session and then finished us finished off with some gym but obviously before the gym we had a meeting um about it ended up being about defensive set plays so we had all the defenders then just looking at some set plays over the last few games and how we can improve obviously it's hard to get them sessions in when you're doing saturday tuesdays um so when you get the opportunity to um he will he will take it, do you know what I mean? Like, because a lot of us, like, even, I was even saying to Heck at some point today, like, I can't remember having done a session like this for a while, but it's just because of the schedule. Um, but yeah, when he has the chance and he has a, a squad available, he will put on a bigger session like that. So I'm quite used to it. The, the players that I met while I was at Lincoln, um, I still have good relationships with them, to be fair. And um, whenever I look back at the sort of run we went on, it's always good memories. Um, obviously, Connor's, Connor's here, and he'll be able to tell you the same. Like, um, it was just a good group, good group of players, and the manager got the best out of us. And we did all we could to try and get promoted that year, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. But um, I still got that sort of hunger where, at a club like Charlton now, I still want to be able to push for something like that and get something like that on my CV. So, uh, with um, Appleton at Lincoln, I think initially I was playing centre mid so he brought me in to play centre mid and then we had like the Covid season um, the season got called off and then when we come in um, and resumed he sort of like sat me down and discussed like playing at left back and I was pretty open to it to be fair because I've always like played midfield and left back throughout my career anyway so I was quite open to it and obviously it's just a chance to get on the pitch and get minutes and it was just him, like, the way he introduced, introduced it to me was pretty positive and it was just like, look, like, it's a chance to go and, you know what I mean, show your ability on the ball still because we're still quite a decent footballing team. So um, it was something that I felt like I stepped up to, but he gave me the belief to do it as well. So, um, yeah, I think he helped a lot in that sense. As a person, he's quite understanding. Um, as long as you're willing to, like, sort of work and do the work and not shy away from it, um, he's understanding with sort of mistakes and what not. He just always says like try and be positive with everything. So if, if you if you're doing something positive and you make a mistake, at least you've gone for it rather than trying to shy away and take the easy way out. Do you know what I mean? And that's just how he is day to day. That's what I, I get from him. And always someone you can go and talk to, in my opinion. So 
Um, not that I feel like I need to because I just feel like I get my work done. Um, but I, I do honestly think that if I ever needed to speak to him, I could. Do you think between left back and midfield, there's obviously a lot of difference. Left back, you're a defender first. Um, um, but I, I also do think that um, there's a lot of things that I take from midfield or take from left back to help me in either position. So I, I feel like I try and get the, both, the best out of both and try and make myself stand out in that sort of way. Like a lot of the time you'll see me um, at left back coming infield to get on the ball. Um, and I feel like that just comes from me having played midfield in the past. Um, but yeah, there's, there's obviously things that I take from being higher up the pitch as well. So as a midfielder, when I'm in and around the box, um, getting that familiarity of like being in the opposition half in those sorts of tight areas can help at left back as well. I've given Con a few assists throughout my career now, I'm pretty sure. But um, no, I was happy to see Con on the score sheet again. Um, I think I can remember I got it from Scotty and as I said, like that sort of infield position is somewhere that I think I picked up just through being a midfielder in the past. So I've sort of come inside the pitch and then I've seen Con make like a run and really and truly I like hung it up for him to head back across but somehow he's headed it in near post. Um, but yeah, that's um that's sort of the the sort of position that I, I look to like pick out passes from and try and affect teams from whether it's like that sort of pass or working it back out wide to someone like Corey. But yeah, I think that's the that's my only goal involvement this season. I'll be hoping to kick on and get a few more um, over the next few months. But yeah, I was happy to get on um, have a contribution in the game. The support on on that day was massive. Like you could just sort of feel it in the stadium, and you sort of feel like you, you just have to keep fighting. Do you know what I mean? Like if the fans have made a trip like this. And I had some family in the stands, which is always nice as well. Um, but yeah, you just, you just, do you know what I mean? You just have that sort of belief where it's like, we just can't give up here. And we stayed in the game. We did well to stay in the game. Um, and yeah, we were rewarded for it. And I hope sort of the fans went back home happy because I think it was a sort of joined effort, if you know what I mean. So we're off tomorrow. Um, we have a sort of, another sort of increased day on Thursday, probably just because of the day off. And then Friday is usually winded right down, but both Thursday and Friday will be um, preparation for the Barnsley game. So it's re really just like looking into how they play and what sort of threats they have and um, how we can affect them. To be fair, Hex introduced me to a new game that I never played before, but I played it with like Hex, TC, um, Karoy. I think Louis jumped on it, but Louis is a bit way off it. Like he's still learning the rules. Um, but yeah, that's, and I think Carlisle was probably the, obviously the longest trip we've done. We took the train and Heck was on DJ for like the whole journey. But yeah, he's, he's usually the, he brings the entertainment, I'd say. You've got like five dice and then, you, yeah, it's a bit of, a bit of lies in there, a bit of deception and a bit of poker face. I'd say the target is still to make the playoffs and try and get promoted. Um, that was the target when I walked in. Obviously I joined this squad a bit later than I would have wanted to towards the back end of the window, but I was happy to walk into a change room that was speaking positive, positively about trying to get promoted. And I think that is still the mindset. Um, obviously, we're not exactly where we want to be, but we're not a million miles away, so I, d I don't see why it's not still an achievable target. That's a day in the life of Tayo Eden.